Watch out for the subprime disaster waiting to happen. You would think that banks learned their lesson last time around. Of course not. They have actually made it worse. Subprime mortgages, subprime car loans, subprime everything. Don't worry though. This time is different. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about debt, mortgages, and so much more. Let's begin. Guilty as charged. Chase mortgage ad from 2005 proves subprime culpability. So take a look at this advertisement right here, the top portion. This type of scheme was going on. I'll read it to you. The font is a little small. Chase. Remember way back in kindergarten when you learned to write your name? It's payoff time. Simply Signature. The Simply Signature loan from Chase Home Finance. Sign your name and let us do the rest. Simple mortgage process, low documentation. One call to your Chase mortgage specialist and you could be on your way to approval. So come on, put your kindergarten career to good use. Stop in and sign. Now that is a real advertisement that you read it now, you might laugh, you might be shocked, you might think it's ridiculous, you might think it's fake, but it was actually happening. And we have to understand that this type of fraud is still happening today. It might not be with this particular instance, with Chase or with subprime borrowers on mortgages, but it just goes somewhere else. There's always a new scheme, there's always a new scam, there's always a new fraud. Whether it's the no-doc home loans and other dodgy subprime practices, whether it's ninja loans, no income job or assets, and all of these adjustable rate mortgages that are going to be in very, very big trouble in the near future. You have to understand that no matter where you look, it's always going to be an issue. It just takes a matter of time. When you look at this, this issue here, it wasn't something that was going on in some developing nation where some individual with no oversight and regulation was able to you know do some fraudulent scheme all right no this happened what 100 years ago 500 years ago no this happened less than 10 years ago and it happened in the united states there's so many regulations. If you scratch your nose, the bank knows about it. The government knows about it. You're not going to be able to do anything, move any more money anywhere without everybody knowing. Everybody, the regulators, the rating agencies, the auditors, all of that. It's all being, you know, just to interject here. Have you ever worked in a company where you've had auditors coming in to deal with all of your business. They scrutinize every detail with a fine tooth comb. You won't be able to get anything by these individuals. And what about all the regulators? What about the rating agencies? They're all complicit, all of them, and people don't realize how it works. But there are some individuals out there who will say, I don't really care. As long as my stocks go up, I really don't care. Well, you might have been one of these individuals that went into Chase and said, hey, I got a signature. I got kindergarten education. I can do this. And so they did it. Then they lost the home. Don't be fooled into all of these schemes. Record highs for average new and used loan amounts. All right, so I wanna talk about auto loans a little bit here. Basically what you can see, whether we're looking at you know subprime, deep subprime, any of these. The amount that people are borrowing today has increased. 
And that's a fact. Year over year change in balance, you could see this here that individuals, no matter at what level, are taking on more debt. And this goes for people with healthy credit. They're taking on more debt. Why? Because they're allowed to. The government is saying, it's totally fine. Connected in with that. Look at this. Lease bubble, a pileup of nearly new cars returning off lease is set to cause trouble for the U.S. car industry. And this has really skyrocketed. You can see this here surpassing, you know, all of the business up until peaking probably around, what, 2002 or so? And it surpassed that. It's not a good sign, of course. A lot of what has happened here has, unfortunately, from all of these charts I've gathered here, that there's more debt being taken on in terms of vehicles. So people are getting leases for longer periods of time. They figure, why pay it off now when I could stretch that out over another year, two years, three years, whatever it is. And so people are literally taking the longest lease that they can. And during that time, you're paying more interest. But if the interest is really low, they're not so worried about it. But that's going to change. It is changing already. Switching gears. Quarterly Fed debt versus quarterly real GDP. Take a look at the red line. Federal debt. It has gone up considerably. And where in the world do they think it's going to go if they continue what they're doing? It's pretty obvious to me, but not to other individuals because they see nothing but growth. I really don't know what growth you're talking about. Really. If we exclude U.S. equities from the equation, where is the actual growth? Are we talking about better employment? We know that's not the case. We've seen that before. Talk about it all the time. I really don't know what, what they're trying to... They say it, but there's actually no facts to back it up. GDP minus Fed debt. Okay, going back into the levels, of course, during the financial crisis, it's not a good sign. How many signs do we need? How many indicators do we need? I, I say this all the time. I keep saying, it's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. It's sort of how you look outside your window. First, you check the weather. Weather said, it's going to be overcast. And then you look outside, and you see a storm brewing, and it's headed your way. But the weatherman said it's just going to be overcast. Chance of rain is maybe, let's say, 10%. But you look outside, and you're pretty certain. I mean, that is a big black cloud. It's coming your way. Do you want to bring your umbrella? Well, you know what? Weatherman said no. So you don't. And then you get rained on. And that's what's going to happen. Because it happens every time. I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not predicting it. All I'm doing is looking back in history, seeing every time people screw up, and then just basically just telling it like it is. I don't make any predictions. All right, this is interesting. The bright yellow line is Wilshire 5000. All right, that's all the stocks put together in the US. You'll see that just absolutely taking off after the financial crisis, thanks to quantitative easing. And you have the, let me get my highlighter, 15 to 64 year old annual population change, this gray line just dramatically decreasing over the past nearly two decades now. Fed funds rate starting to climb, but it's basically right at the bottom. 
and then you have the DPI. And we can look at this as basically disposable income. The rate at which these two, and even when you factor in the population change, this is not a good sign. I can't stop saying it. Okay. What we need is more and more and more disposable income. Now, I am, I'm seeing this line continuously increasing. Now, it's increasing in nominal terms, not in real terms. Actually, in real terms, it is declining. That's a fact. That is an absolute fact. The stock market, it's increasing. There's no, no doubt about that. I mean, with the trillions that have been printed, it has definitely found its way into equities in the US in particular. If you look at the US equities, all right, you see a chart, you can see, okay, it increases like this. You look at the world equities in the same period of time, and you see it basically going like this. And it's sort of bouncing up and down throughout the same period of time. The world has not seen the level of infusion of quantitative easing that the U.S. has. There's, there's no doubt. There's no exception to that. Then you have to look at the real economic factors. That's why I'm talking about this population change. You need more of those individuals to be put into the workforce to continue the Ponzi scheme. They don't have disposable income. And it just continues, continues to diminish, and it will get even worse as you see the Fed funds rate right here at the bottom increasing. All right, quickly, need to get to these two points. Inflows to Japanese equities funds near five-year high. I thought this was really interesting because you're looking at billions on the way in. At the same time, there's a whole scandal going on. Weird. Very unusual. The only thing I could think of here is that we have seen a lot of distress going on in the U.S., money's flowing that way, or quite frankly, that the central bank is printing up more money. It's making its way around. Japan industrial production, Japan's industrial base has gained nothing from their QQE, while Japanese households have been devastated. These are important to note. Because we're at a time right now where everything should be booming. We should have no statistics going downward. It's just not going to happen. If this was a real booming economy, you would find very, very few statistics that show you this type of information. But here we are. So I'll end it there. If you found the video informative, please give me a thumbs up. Remember that when you give me a thumbs up, it helps to support this channel. And guess what? This channel is about to hit 100,000 subscribers in the next few days. Be a part of it. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button and you can be one of the amazing subscribers on here as we charge through 100,000. All right, that's all for this video. If you found it informative, you'll find my books even more informative. You can actually flip through the books. All you got to do is go to Amazon. There are links in the description of this video. Click on that. It'll bring you over. There's a look inside feature that's going to allow you to flip through the pages of these books to see if you like them. Take care.